Welcome to the 21st episode of How to Think Script. In the 21st episode, we're going to be building a cumulative tick indicator, and that's really a way to use market internals on an aggregate basis. A lot of you already use the tick, the market internals. You may have even seen the supply demand uh, divergence uh, indicators that we had, which was our very first tutorial. This is really now starting to build on the idea of market internals, take it one step further, and look at it on an aggregate scale. So for those of you that want to skip the tutorial part and you just want the actual indicator, it's available for free for everyone to download at tosindicators.com slash indicator slash cumulative tick. And for all of our volatility box members, we've taken this one step further in a way that I think you'll find interesting and very exciting and much more useful. So we've created the cumulative tick pro indicator in which we're going to be using Python along with some data sets to try and essentially take all the cumulative tick values and do something useful with it. That's where we then have a next day prediction model. This is based off of what the cumulative tick value was, based off of what's been relevant versus not, and what the next days look like. Try and use that to where at the end of each day, you have some sort of a context of what you should be expecting tomorrow, uh, which I think gives you a massive edge. The second is using, again, data to have context of whether you should be expecting a trending versus a choppy day. And that's using purely just the cumulative tick values. And so I think that you'll find to be very interesting as well. And then finally, in the pro version, we're also going to take context of the values across different markets. So for example, uh, the tick, the NYSE tick for the SPY, the version for the NASDAQ, which plots automatically. And as you keep changing between markets, it uses the right tick value that it should be using. So I think you'll find this to be useful. For all of our members, you can find that tutorial on tosindicators.com slash indicators slash cumulative tick pro. All right, so with both of those download links out of the way, let's get started. So first off, let's start by defining what the cumulative tick actually is. Now the cumulative tick is really a very simple way of trying to keep track of the running total of the New York Stock Exchange tick throughout the day. And so we're going to be using the bare example of the tick here, but for our volatility box members, again, there'll be the market appropriate version, right? So now this makes sense, but let's use this to paint an actual picture. And this is using an example where if you assume once the market opens at 630, where the tick value is zero, and as a result of that, the cumulative tick value is also zero. Now let's assume five minutes have passed by, 635 rolls around. Now the tick value is negative 700. So it takes the sum and it takes zero plus negative 700 to give you the negative 700 cumulative tick value. Now 640 comes around, the tick value at that time is negative 500. Again, takes negative 700, adds negative 500 to that, and you have negative 1200. So this should start to make a lot of sense, right? Just a running total. Now uh, 645 comes around, you have a plus 1000 tick reading, negative 1200 plus 1000. The cumulative tick is now negative 200 compared to negative 1200 just five minutes ago. Now 650 rolls around. Now you have a tick reading of negative 325. Again, negative 200 plus negative 325, negative 525. So on and so forth to where at the end of the day, you'll be left with the final cumulative tick value. And each step along the way, you're also left with the cumulative tick value. And finding the relationship between each of these time frames based off of whether you're on a five minute, one minute, whatever type of chart combined with divergences, combined with the edge signals indicator for all of our volatility box members, all of this information together helps you to give a very holistic picture where you have more information, more avenues to trade, and more confidence in areas for confluence as we look at some of our setups. Now, if we plot this just on a bar chart format, just so you get an idea on a more visual scale, what this cumulative tick value looks like compared to just looking at the pure tick, you'll notice that despite having a plus 1000 tick reading right here, our cumulative tick value at 645 was still negative, right? And so that's where context matters, but you'll sort of see this gradual incline. And of course, these are made up numbers, but the, the beauty of this starts to become when you're actually using this in live market hours, where you start to notice these differences, you start to pinpoint areas of divergences, you may have overbought, oversold zones, for us, that's the volatility box, and all of that together really helps to give you confidence to try and take some of these reversals. Now keep in mind this cumulative tick indicator is really most useful with day trading. However, for our members, again, we've taken it one step further where you have the next day prediction models. Uh, and that's where I think it starts to become a little bit more interesting for quote unquote swing trading, more so just what you expect to happen tomorrow. And at least it gives you a way to try and be a bit more cautious when you need to be cautious versus a bit more aggressive when say the tick suggests that, hey, you could be aggressive for the next day. So now before we start into actually building this indicator, let's answer the question, how do we get an edge? 
And this is where for the pro version, it starts to become really useful. But now that you know what the cumulative tick is, the idea of having a historical value there, uh, knowing what it's typically been, knowing what are considered to be extremes, all of that really starts to actually give you some sort of an idea of, hey, this is what the tick value is, this is what it's been, and this is the anomaly here, and this is how we can take advantage of that. Right, so I think that is the most critical key advantage here to try and give you some sort of edge compared to, I think, what most people look at, which is just the raw cumulative tick value. And that's for those of you that have even heard of the cumulative tick. A lot of folks I know just use purely just the tick value, which on its own, yes, it's really useful, especially if you have multiple bursts of plus 1,000 tick readings. But the cumulative tick, I think, will give you a better, uh, more aggregate basis of looking at this uh, where you can do something with that information. Right? And so that's, again, the second step here, which is, well, now that you have this information, well, what do you do with it? And so knowing what to do with that contextual information starts to become key. And then finally, for those of you that trade markets outside of, say, just the S&P, which I know a lot of you do, that's where using the right tick value starts to become really interesting. So, for example, we have the New York Stock Exchange tick, but then you also have, say, the NASDAQ tick. And depending on what platform you're on, you have different uh, symbol tickers here. That is something that you need to do in terms of your research as well. But for our volatility box members, we've done that for you. All right, so with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and start writing this indicator. You'll notice it's just a few lines of code. The cumulative tick is actually very simple to write. Uh, and so we're going to go ahead and write it, take a look at what the final result looks like. And then for all of our volatility box members, there's a part two of this tutorial in which we'll go into a little bit more detail. All right, so starting off inside of Thinkorswim here, let's first start by cleaning our charts. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to take this opportunity uh, to let all of our volatility box members, our stock volatility box members, know that we're starting to introduce a level of machine learning into our models here, which I think is going to be pretty exciting. So stay tuned for that. I'll send out a note when it's starting to get ready and incorporated. I have a feeling it's going to be as soon as early this week. Uh, so I think that would be an absolute game changer in terms of how we trade, trading a little bit smarter, having fewer opportunities, but opportunities where when we strike, it's actually just a very high probability trade. Anyway, so now let's go ahead and clean out our charts here. So let's delete all of these indicators. Let's click apply. We'll click OK. And before we start writing any code, let's first review what the chart of the tick looks like, just to give you an idea of why is this uh, aggregate basis really useful. Right. So if we take a look at the one minute chart here, this, these are the tick values. You'll notice there's a lot of values throughout the day. They're all very sporadic. They're jagged. Trying to keep uh, track of this, really imagine like you're trying to count cards and blackjack or something of that sort. For a lot of people can be overwhelming unless you just have this planted on the side of your charts, something on, that, that just keeps a running total. Right. And that's what we're trying to build here. Now, if we start by coming into a chart of say spy, just so it's a little bit less overwhelming there, we'll click the uh, studies icon at the top, click create study. And we can give this a name, so we'll call it TI, cumulative tick for us. Uh, and then here, we're going to start by really just writing some very simple code. So the first thing we'd like to do is actually declare this to be on the lower. And by putting declare lower, this indicator, whenever we add it, will plot towards the lower study pane as opposed to on our price chart. And that will help to just keep our charts clean and not really have... Uh, that the axes on the right hand side get skewed based off of each variable because the tick values are much higher than I think most stock charts are. So now what we'd like to do is first start by actually incorporating the tick data here. So we'll say def tick data, actually uh, tick data. And we'd like to use here the high, low, close three variable uh, that's part of thinkorswim. This is something that comes built in where it just takes the high plus the low plus the close, divides it by three, uh, and that gives you a nice average value for the tick for, in this case, the particular minute since we're on a one minute time frame chart. And so I'll put symbol, and here we can go ahead and actually define that, hey, we like this value for our tick value. Now, if we want to see what this plot in like just as of this moment, so we can uh, use an add label here to test that out. We'll say add label, yes, tick data, and then we'll just give this a color dot white. And we click OK, and that added onto our charts here. You'll see that the last tick value was negative 164.667 on that high, low, close divided by three. So that's cool. Now let's come back into our code here and keep working forward. So we'll uh, comment this guy out. All right, so now that we have our tick data here, the next thing we'd like to do is create some sort of a running total, right? So if I first write some non-code here, the way that I think it makes sense to do it would be to have something like, say, tick data on the previous bar plus tick data on the current bar, right? And so this way we keep a running total. There's a few different edge cases here that we'd like to take care of. And we're going to have some errors, but I'm just going to use this to type them out. The first is we want to have this add only throughout the day, 
or say, uh, yeah, we'll just say throughout the day. But as soon as we hit, say, uh, 1 o'clock Pacific Standard Time when the market closes, we'd like this to reset to zero. So that's the first thing we'd like. We also want to make sure that we only have uh, the, the day that actually works. So any new day should, again, start off at zero, uh, starts at zero cumulative tick, and we create a new count compared to, say, uh, carrying over the previous day's value. Right. And so with those two rules, I think we can start by first just writing some simple code here. So we'll say def cumulative tick value. And here we can say uh, we can use a second still time function, which if for those of you that are curious, there's a whole suite of functions that are available inside of Thinkorswim. And so if I search uh, seconds till time, you can learn a little bit more about this function, but second till time takes one input variable, which is the till time. And so this is the time that we'd like to see. And really just read this as English, which is how many seconds till this time that's inside of the parentheses. So now we'll return a number of seconds, but if that number is equal to say zero, then we know that, hey, it is the uh, set time that we're looking for, right? So if we use that function here, so we'll say uh, death cumulative tick value, if our seconds, till time, all times in uh, ThinkScript are in Easter Standard Time. So we'd like to say this is 9.30, which means the markets have now opened. And so if the seconds till time there is less than zero, and we're uh, before the market closes, so we'll say seconds till time, and this time we have 1600 is greater than zero. So that's to say we are in between 9.30 and 1600, uh, which is the end of the close, then, We'd like to add the previous day's tick or the previous tick data to the current tick data bar. So we'll say then take the tick data, which is just the value for the existing one minute bar, and then add it to we'll make this cumulative tick value the, the aggregate running total. So we'll say then take that plus cumulative tick value, the previous bar's value. And so that's taking the previous bar's value plus the current bar's value to give us a running total. And if this is not true, then that means we're outside of this period, which means set this equal to zero, meaning we'd like to restart, reset it to zero, start again, it's most likely a new day. So now if we see what this just looks like, if we plot this, so we'll say cumulative tick plot, and the reason why we're making this a separate plot variable as opposed to doing a plot here is so that we can start to introduce things like a double NAND, along with any other Boolean conditions that we may be interested in looking. And so here we'll say, uh, plot cumulative tick plot and we'll say if uh, cumulative tick value is not equal to zero meaning it's not a new day then plot it whoops then cumulative tick otherwise double nan meaning plot nothing so now if we click apply here and if we take a look to see what this looks like, we'll see that we have just a line chart right now, but this line chart is keeping an aggregate value of the cumulative tick. So we've made some decent progress. Now, if you want to try and make this a little prettier first, we can say something like uh, giving it a painting strategy. So we'll say cumulative tick plot here dot set painting strategy. And now if I actually show you all the different painting strategies that we have, painting set painting strategy, You'll see set painting strategy takes a list of valid style parameters, which is right here. And these are all of the different parameters that we have, right? So you can either do uh, points, but the one that I think is going to be interesting for this purpose is line versus points. And let's see what that looks like. You'll, this is what the, the actual line will look like. But if we plot that on the value that we currently have here, so we'll say painting strategy dot line whoops, versus points, and we close that out. Let's click apply. Now you'll see that we have this plotting in a little bit cleaner of a format where each value can actually be segregated, right? So we have each circle that is a separate value for each minute time frame. It's very easy to see what value that is. So let's take that information and do something with it. This is where colors start to become pretty useful to me. So we say cumulative tick uh, plot. And here we'd like to assign a value color. Again, if I pull in assign value color here, just to walk you through, this is where you can have a custom color, which this uh, parameter also takes Boolean conditions, which means, uh, in again, layman's terms, you can say, assign a color. If something is true, then make it this color, else make it this color. And that's where we can assign a value color to the actual plot here, where instead of just plotting cyan, it plots a different value based on whether or not the tick value is increasing or decreasing compared to the previous bar here. 
So we'll say uh, cumulative tick plot dot assign value color, uh, and then let's actually assign that color. So we'll say if our cumulative tick plot is greater than zero, then we'd like it to be actually, we probably want it to say uh, greater than the previous bar, not zero. So we'll say cumulative tick plot one. Then we'd like this color to be cyan. I like the color cyan. If you'd like to see a different color, this is where you can change that. Else, if it's been decreasing or is the same since we didn't have a greater than or equal to here, then else color dot gray. So now if I click apply, that then makes this really easy to see, right? So before we even dive a little bit deeper into what else we can do here, let's first see that, uh, for example, you'll notice we went from a rising cumulative tick value here to once we have that first value, you get an idea of the sort of declines that just having a very simple segregation between colors, between whether or not the cumulative tick is increasing or decreasing, helps you to time the reversals up. Now, of course, this on its own doesn't really do a whole lot of good. It's where you start to overlap this with other indicators, other tools. So before I actually continue here, if I load in the supply demand edge, for example, this is another free indicator that we built, our very first ThingScript tutorial. Actually, I think it was our first or second ThingScript tutorial. Uh, it was towards the beginning. That's the point. You'll notice that here, you didn't really have any supply demand edge indicators. In fact, you only had a bullish sign. You had that bullish sign come in, but uh, the, the tick values were still declining. You keep seeing this decline, whereas you're still getting a suite of bullish tools. Then you start to see some sort of a flattening out here. Once you see the tick value starts to change just a tad bit while you have a bullish signal. Again, here you may be stretching in terms of trying to paint a perfect picture when you're looking back. But that's where as part of the pro uh, version of this, we're going to take this and make this just a tad bit smarter. But now using this cumulative tick value, the last thing we need to do is if we zoom out here. And let's actually go to, say, a five minute chart you'll notice that each one just breaks, right? Since we set this uh, again to reset at the end of each day, we don't really have a clear separation here. And so I think adding in some sort of vertical line helps to make this clean, whereas this vertical line overlaps the vertical line on the top, then you have a very clear idea of, hey, this is a new day, especially useful when you're going back and looking at charts. So we come back into our studies tab, let's click the scroll icon, and let's continue editing this. Now, have to add in that vertical line, uh, we can do so by creating a very simple new day variable, right? And that new day variable is pretty easy to use because there's a get day function built inside of Thinkorswim where we can just say, hey, is today the same as yesterday? And as long as that is not true, then we know that it's a new day. And now we can come in and we can say something like, uh, actually, it's not a sign, it's add vertical line and we'd like to add this vertical line if i pull up my thinkorswim here let's show you all the different functions that it takes or the parameters you'll notice that add vertical line takes first a boolean variable then it's whatever the text you'd like it to be along with the color variable and then a stroke variable if you'd like that which is really just the, the style here Right? And so you'll see there's an example plotted below, which is add vertical line. This they're checking if it, uh, the period lines up along with the get week variable. There's a few different Boolean tests here. If all of these tests are true, then color.orange, and they want it to be a short dashed line. So we can use something pretty similar here. So we'll say add vertical line as long as it's a new day. Uh, we can you don't really need text here, but if you wanted to, you could say something like new day close this out and then we'll say make this a color gray and then you could even do something they had the curve dot short dash let's see what this looks like so if we click apply then you'll notice that that just now plotted a new day variable anytime we do have a new day and it overlaps with the the variable on the top or the dash line excuse me that thinkorswim gives us uh built in and just like that we've built a cumulative tick indicator that you can now use to actually trade Right, so for those of you that are trying to find ways that you can use this to overlap with your existing set, you can use things like the breakout indicators to try and find, hey, do we have a bearish breakout with the tick supporting it? You can also do things like using the supply demand edge, which we've beaten to death. Uh, for all of our volatility box members, I found it particularly useful to try and incorporate the edge signals here. So if I close this out, we bring in the edge signals and use the edge signals to try and find areas of potential reversal zones, right? You'll notice, again, you're looking for something like this, where you see a flattening out at the top, you start to see the tick value changing, and that's supported where you have the first color change along with the edge signal here, giving you at least a higher degree of confidence that, hey, you do expect a slight reversal here in the spy, which of course did lead to a pretty nice puke down below. 
right? In the same way, if you're looking for a bullish zone, that's where you'd be looking at, hey, where is there a, lot, a stream of really either gray where you're now looking to try and change this, something like this. Again, you give it an example right here, you'll notice we're declining in terms of the cumulative tick, cumulative tick, excuse me. Very easy to see that. You're starting to get some bullish edge signal arrow suggesting that we're now officially oversold. And this arrow is the one that happens to actually overlap with the uh, change of colors where you see that that leads to a fairly nice reversal. All right, and that was it. So that, as you notice, that was a pretty simple indicator that we coded, right? It was less than what, 12, 13 lines of code plus some spaces here. We actually have some junk, so if I delete this, and we just keep our code nice and clean, even by keeping it clean, less than 12 lines of code, which gives you a cumulative tick indicator that you can start to use to actually trade and day trade successfully. For all our Volatility Box members, we will have a part two of this in which we're going to not only use data, we're going to use Python, we're going to start to layer on other observations and use that to really make the cumulative tick indicator work for us as opposed to needing to sit there trying to cipher each pattern uh, while we're actually in the middle of day trading, right? We want to do all of this homework before ahead of time where the indicator really does most of the heavy lifting for us, just gives us very concrete actual information that we can then take and continuously profit. All right, I hope the cumulative tick indicator tutorial was helpful and it helped to at least give you a better idea of some of the ThinkScript concepts here, especially here where we showed a lot of the learning center functions and how you can use the documentation to continuously write your own sets of indicators. All right, take care, everyone. Good luck trading. Have a great rest of your weekend, and we'll see you in the next update. Take care, everyone. <music>